There ain't no good guys. There ain't no bad guys. There's only you and me, and we just disagree. Hey, what's going on? It's me, Bob. Thanks again for joining me at the hardest part of the ring, which, by the way, is the ring apron. It's not the middle of the ring, where everyone does their finisher and tries to pin one another. No, 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 no. The apron, the side, where nothing legal happens, is the hardest part of the ring. Uh, my name's Bob. We're talking about the Hulu edition, not the big, long edition. Not the big kahuna that's longer than most pay-per-views before the year 2000. We're talking about the Hulu edition of the November 30th, 2020, WWE, Monday Night Raw, 90-minute action pack, limited commercial interruption, Hulu, it's TV in the palm of your hands. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, there's was, there was some good stuff on the show. We open the show with Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Hogan slams Andre, and there's some other stuff because that's the signature. We see it all the time. Uh, then we have uh, the the, the hip hop intro, and this this is so, oh, this is so last minute Vince all over it. I don't. The number one contender triple threat match: AJ Styles, Keith Lee, and Riddle. Uh, I'm gonna say Riddle. I'm gonna overpronounce it like that, just like I say sandwich, just for fun. The king is English, pal. God damn it. Uh, they keep calling this triple threat the sudden death triple threat. So the rule is the first person to score a pinfall wins, which is the rules of all of their triple threats. Uh, it does just bump into the computer. Um, yeah, that means nothing. That is just the tagline, and every wrestler has to say it and sound like an idiot every time they do. Uh, announcers as well, and everyone loses credibility, and it's distracting and stupid. Um, let's open the show with a moment of bliss. Alexa Bliss, the best thing on a program for the last several weeks. Is it wrong that I'm aroused? Let's, uh, forget I said that. Uh, yeah, she's tremendous. She introduces Randy Orton. Um, I love the way she, she relates this version of Alexa to Randy and kind of stands up to him. And, uh, it is weird how Bliss and the Fiend are kind of the baby faces here. I mean, somebody has to be. But how are you going to get heat on the fiend if he is the baby face? I don't understand. Well, you are going to get heat apparently by getting to Alexa. Um, Okie dokie. So Randy and Bliss go back and forth, and we, uh, Randy says he has the secret. He thinks he figured out the weakness to the fiend. He knows Bray's weakness, but he doesn't know the fiend's weakness. And now he does. So the lights go on and off. There's a big flicker. There's some noises. There's some red lights. And Randy has a. Uh, um, uh, Alexa Bliss in his arms, he's carrying her like a fireman, I guess. But it's not a fireman's carry, it's a different maneuver. And the fiend shows up and kind of begs for him to give her back, and Randy does, and then Randy walks away laughing. And this is the first time any of the fiend's attacks have not worked. So, I thought it was done well. Uh, and I'm a fiend fan, my favorites don't have to look good all the time, okay? That's not fun. Okay, if, if you think your favorites have to start off awesome and be awesome in the middle and end awesome and have no character development, no story arc, learn nothing, uh, achieve nothing, then go watch Captain Marvel. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's, uh, this time we have our Symphony of Destruction match. Uh, and again, this is the Hulu edition. So if I'm skipping anything, this is how they aired it on Hulu. They, uh, it's Elias and Jeff Hardy, of course. And the last time they had one of these, it was Elias and Braun Strowman, and we had Corey Graves giving uh, all of the Megadeth uh, song title uh, little inserts that he could. But nevertheless, uh, Jeff Hardy lived this one by the got through this one by the skin of his teeth. Okay, see, there's one. Uh, they, Elias comes out to Amen, his song, which made me think he was going to win because it's new music. But um, Elias did the worst pre-jump backwards over the top rope uh, about an hour before Jeff Hardy clotheslined him. Um, kind of drives me bananas. I hate that stuff. Uh, and Elias is, Elias is tall enough where you shouldn't need anybody to knock him over, let alone, you know... I mean, you can stand there and wait for Jeff to hit you. You're, you're still going to get over the damn thing, okay? If you're a little shorter, you need somebody to kind of smack you over, but uh, Elias shouldn't have needed help, and he didn't need the pre-jump, and he's he's also got enough weight on Jeff where he should just take it. I guess I, I didn't care for that. Uh, we have our, our wacky comedy moment. Our truth is hiding in a piano. I can't even be mad because it's our truth And uh, I did a fun a little uh, back and forth here where... 
two different people interfering. I got beat up and hit with guitars by Jeff and Elias. I think Lince Dorado and um, Gran Torino and, uh, and Drew Goulash uh, all got uh, hit in one form or fashion. Uh, Elias gets electrocuted. I'm not kidding. And then uh, Jeff Hardy uh, does this bananas bump, which everyone's talking about, where the table's on the outside and Jeff jumps off that ring post thingy. And it looks like he smacks his skull on, on the back of the, the, the metal steps there. And uh, he had these little violins on top of Elias, which which Elias had to kind of keep on himself. It always looks weird when they try that. But nevertheless, Jeff does the thing, scores the pinfall, and almost immediately plays the tambourine. Uh, I can't even be mad at that. Um, I hope he's alive. It seems like he's okay. So um, I hope that's the case. 92 stars this match gets. Let's go to Ms. TV. They piped in the people yelling Ms. TV because they yelled it once in 2016, and they recorded it. Seamus is the guest. Uh, Miz accidentally says money in the brink. I don't know what the brink is, but Miz said it. And he said it with all the confidence of a guy who said it right. So kudos to Miz. Uh, you see what's happening here. Uh, Seamus uh, gets a little tired of them. He, he beats them both up for being jerks. But then they double team him and they lay out, they lay out this big brawling monster with a piece of uh, hollow uh, metal. And uh, so there's no save. You can see what's happening right away here. Uh, Drew doesn't make the save. And this is classic. This is how all of Hulk Hogan's friends would turn on him. You know, all the Orndorffs and, and beefcakes throughout the the whole time how Hogan was Hogan. And uh, so, so basically what you're telling me is Seamus has been a baby face for three minutes. And we just planted the seed for the heel turn. So good. Very good. Don't get me used to that. Why would I invest in that? Okay. He was fighting Riddle last week. Oh, gosh. Uh, 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 because if they're doing Drew AJ, uh, so Drew Sheamus is the Rumble? Is that what you're telling me? All right. I mean, I don't know. This is one of the better versions of Sheamus, and he's, a, he's still a heavy hitter, and I'll talk about that later. There's no save. Asuka and Lana in the back. Clearly, Lana does not understand what Asuka is saying, and they talk to a blonde lady. And then uh, Shayna and Nia also talk to a blonde lady, and they blame each other for Shayna being rolled up by Asuka the week before. And then there's a women's tag match, and uh, Lana smushes. Lana gets smushed by Nia in the corner like a some bitch. Uh, they're done with the Lana table thing, thankfully. And uh, Lana over Shayna. There was a kind of a double team, and Asuka nailed it. So basically, <sighs> this feud has been and will continue to be a Nia Lana feud. Shayna's an afterthought. Asuka, who's the champion, is an afterthought. Um, so Shayna's a bit player, and they're the tag team champions in this, this stupid feud. The only way. Anyone's going to watch this and finally be proud of Lana and get behind her is if Lana pins Naya clean, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring, which is not the hardest part of the ring. It's actually the, the uh, much easier, but nevertheless. And they're not going to do that because Naya is the Rock's cousin. So this will go nowhere, but... At least it'll be long. Uh, Lon over Shane. There are 44 stars this match gets, according to Dave Seltzer at the Wrestling Rubbernecker. Sheamus and Drew were backstage. Uh, and of course, Sheamus is mad. Drew's laughing at him. This entire night was made to win, to make Drew actually be the asshole here, uh, which is not good. If you're going to, if Sheamus is going to be a bitter, jealous friend and do the turn after being a good guy for a minute and a half, then Drew has to, like, be a cool guy, and they're making Drew not as cool a guy. Why are you doing that? We like Drew. Riddle and talks to AJ Styles and his friend Omos about a, a bunny and a turtle named Hoppy, which is kind of amusing. And they're going to have a sudden death match later on. Of course they are. Oh, and now it's time for the subtle death match. So, um, 
AJ wins the thing. This was a great match. Um, it was it was creative. It was a bit a bit choreographed for the more traditional Tazzy taste. But at the other hand, Raw can be very lacking on the physical side and so heavy on the promo side. I felt like every segment I watched on Hulu was a god damn backstage segment. And I just got sick of that. I lost track of how many backstage. My whole notes are just backstage segments. Backstage segments. First, we got a blonde lady over here. We're gonna talk to people before the match. Talk to them after the match. Charlie Caruso's over here. Charlie Caruso's backstage talking about an interview she's gonna do in a ring later. And oh my god, Riddle's got to go up to everybody and mess with everybody. And it's a lot. It's a lot of backstage. So, um, so it was nice to see. All sorts of creative stuff. Keith is curling Riddle and smashes Riddle into AJ as he's he's curling Riddle. Uh, Keith was great in this. I'm glad they didn't beat Keith here. He, he walked away pissed off, and he looked like a star. He did that leapfrog, the double leapfrog over the t AJ and Riddle, and it was just ridiculous. Uh, I loved it. And AJ, it's funny to see AJ be the most old-school guy in a multi-man match. It's funny to me. But times have changed, and um, he, he almost got smushed when Riddle got pounced by Keith. He, AJ, I think, barely got uh, flattened there. Uh, just good stuff all around. Not a lot to say. Just um, I enjoyed this. I think it. Everybody looked good. My the surprise was no almost interference. The big man did not interfere. I thought that was odd because that's that's kind of a given. But but he they make up for it later. Uh, Charlie Caruso is backstage talking to Miz and Morrison, and uh, who already had a talk show segment. And then we go backstage again from the other backstage to Miz and John, who are backstage with AJ and Almost, and they give him a peach pie because he's from Georgia and the state is associated with a particular fruit. And then we go backstage after the two backstage segments, Riddle and MVP are arguing, and Bobby Lashley puts a full Nelson on Riddle. And after this backstage segment, this third one, we go to a fourth backstage segment in the row. Seamus and Keith Lee are having a conversation where Keith Lee tells Seamus that he thinks Seamus will turn on him. And Seamus says sarcastically, excuse me, I'm going to go turn on my tag partner, which I thought was hilarious. And kind of cool. Um, what happens? Oh, I made a prediction here and I was wrong. I predicted that there would be some kind of uh, mistaken hit from Drew to Sheamus in the tag match to uh, further the ire of Sheamus. Maybe that's next week or the week after, I don't know. But I was incorrect. The, you know, in, we hype up an interview with Charlie Caruso coming up. Three announcers hype up a segment where another announcer... We'll talk to someone who's about to have a match right after they talk again. After four or five backstage segments. Drew McIntyre finally comes out and summons the rest of the Thundercats. He, uh, he talks to Charlie Caruso. He says, you know, Roman, he doesn't like him. And um, AJ, he has a problem with AJ, but they're going to wrestle over a championship but naturally, okay, whenever that happens, it's a couple of weeks from now. We do the tag match. This was fun. Mostly Sheamus. Sheamus took the heat, but Sheamus uh, smacked the tar out of him early on. Sheamus given the the ten forearms, uh, the beats of the Bowery. I don't know what a Bowery is, but he has the, he has the guy standing uh, facing outwards towards where the fans would be on the ring apron, which, by the way, is the hardest part of the ring. And yeah, I love him doing that to Miz because I complain that Miz doesn't like to get hit. And uh, Seamus hits you because you can hear it. And I just love everything you can hear. I always love that. And that's why I'm enjoying Seamus lately. So they do the thing. There's a, I was wrong. Uh, Drew actually is a bit unselfish here. And he offers Seamus the, the death blow to Morrison. but uh, Or to Miz, excuse me. But Morrison pulls Sheamus off the apron, which is the hardest part of the ring, and tosses him over the barricade where Sheamus disappears forever. Hasn't been seen since. And AJ does his springboard forearm, and Drew stares at it as he gets hit. And there is a disqualification because outside interference is against the rules of this particular tag team contest. The match gets 700 stars. And uh, this was great. Almost uh, AJ backs off Drew. 
does the backwards over the top rope with no pre-jump because you don't have to. You're not taking a move on like Elias and falls backwards right into Omos who holds him up in that British Bulldog power slam position. And AJ cuts his, it's not really a promo because he doesn't have a microphone, but his shit talking from a distance, he, uh, he yells at him as Omos is holding him. And I thought that was great. Um, I'm going to try to find a picture of that for this thing. So overall, it was actually one of the better Raws in, in a while, one of the better Hulu editions of Raw. Uh, the backstage was, oof. Basically, the Fiend, Orton, and Randy stuff I really enjoyed. I thought they pulled off, those three pull off nonsense really well, and I, I got to give them credit for that. And everything AJ did tonight was, uh, don't, don't say phenomenal, that's stupid, but everything AJ Styles did was, it was really outstanding. I enjoyed it. And the Seamus Drew thing was not as predictable as I thought it was going to be. I like being wrong. I love being wrong, especially in 2020 pro wrestling. I love being wrong, but not like a subvert your expectations, bad Star Wars movie kind of wrong. Like, oh, I didn't predict they'd do the stupidest thing ever. Just, oh, okay, I thought they would do the obvious, their own formula, like a contract sign doesn't go well. And, um... They did something different than I thought they were going to do, and because they had to. They had to get interested in AJ versus Drew if that's the match we're doing up, doing next. Then we kind of just have to string the, the drew Sheamus thing along for a little while longer. I'm assuming there'll be more tags, and that errant hit, that mistaken hit, it's coming. I guarantee you. But I'm glad I was wrong. So there you go. The uh, one other thing I want to say is as dangerous as it was for Jeff Hardy to, to take that bump and have his head bounce off the, the metal steps there. I'm at least thankful that during the triple threat match, which they off and on remind you has no DQ when it's convenient, I'm glad no one did anything really stupid on the ring apron, because a lot of people don't know the ring apron is actually the hardest part of the ring. 